my loves welcome back a little bit wonky hope you're doing okay so this week we're doing a future read now as psychics it's one of my favorite things to do is to look at the future and see what's happening with you your life with the person you're asking about absolutely love doing it you can catch my breath and that's what we're gonna do today i just ran up the stairs and like i know like you guys know that i'm pregnant so i just really get out of breath which is mad because i am a gym girl as well like a I like to, I, I ran last year and he's like, loads of money for kids, cancer charity, and now I can't even walk up the stairs. <laughs> anyway, soon, uh, soon be catching my breath again. Right, the future energy of you and your person. So this is going to be deck number one. This one is the Modern Witch Tarot. We're, we're using the Liminal decks today. And this one is deck number two. And this one is the White Newman Liminal, uh, Liminal 11 Tarot as well. Okay, so I want you to go to the deck that you are most drawn to and as you get drawn to the deck and you like the colours and you like the imagery and all of that, I want you to visualise your person, think of them and just feel the energy and then push it into the deck you're most drawn to or see a green, pink colour going towards that deck or just sense her emotions and feelings and we'll just put it into the deck for you. Let's go, deck number one. So... Catch my breath. What is the future of you and the person that you are asking about? I do love a future reading. That's why all tarot readings that you see on YouTube should theoretically be timeless. Because as psychics, we can dive into the past, present and the future. Uh, but I do love the predictions of the future readings. I love seeing how people's lives go and when they're like, oh, it all happened. I'm like, yes, yeah, so. <laughs> well, of course. But, you know, it's absolutely wonderful uh, feeling when... You, you message and say, oh, this happened, and you always kind of sound surprised. I'm like, are you really that surprised? <laughs> okay, what is the future of you and the person that you're asking about? Oh, great. Three of Swords. Two of Cups. Seven of Wands. Be prepared for some arguments, guys. Hand Man. And let's get one more. So these cards have decided to tell you about what High Priestess, the immediate future. So we can always delve into a longer term future on individual readings, but this is your immediate future. And I want you guys to be prepared, like I said, for some potential arguments. Now, your person, Two of Cups, let's start over here, has got very, very strong feelings for you, very strong emotions, and you have them for them as well. There is a very, very strong love here. There is a very strong desire, there is a very strong passion, but mostly it's love. And this love has kind of got a healing energy that comes with it as well. So you guys are likely to have shared past lives together. So if you are going through the crap, and you need to pass live reading, give me a shout. But if you are going through the crap with your person, know that a lot of this is because you are here for this healing energy for you guys. That karmic energy needs to be cleared, okay? And this is where that healing elixir kind of comes in. We've got, um, with the, the symbol at the top, I don't know how many of you are in the UK, but we often see this infinity symbol on ambulances and things like that because it's a sign of healing. Um, so the love is there with you guys. You've got the infinity symbol. So you're probably like higher vibrational soulmates, twin flames, something with a higher vibrational frequency. And you have that love, but you also have that healing energy coming through with you guys. And if you are going through heartbreak and pain, it's most likely that there is a sense of karmic energy that comes from it. So if you haven't argued with your person yet, please be prepared that it's likely to happen. When you're going to ask what we're we going to be arguing over, jealousy. Okay, so jealousy is going to come to the forefront. Or feeling that you have to defend or they are going to defend their actions. So just be prepared for a little bit of conflict coming and a little bit of heartache, or, or heartache coming into this as well. When this happens, I really find it important that you guys focus on the love that the two of you share rather than the heartbreak that you are feeling, okay? Because love, and I hate to sound really cheesy, but love uh, from, uh, from spirit, what they always say is love conquers all, you know? And all sides of life has this duality. You have light and dark, good and bad, right and wrong. All of life, every positive has a negative and love and fear are two opposites. So if you go into this place of fear, of loss, of grief, 
of sadness, you hit this lower vibrational frequencies. So we have to bring the focus up by focusing on love. Now I know, especially because I have obsessive compulsive disorder, I know that when you go into that state of fear, it's very, very hard to break out of those chains that hold you into place, okay? But what you can do is try to distract yourself. And once you distract yourself, you bring that frequency up. And once you're in that state of distraction, you can focus on love and it will feel better, okay? Telling you that from an OCD perspective. Anyway, obviously I'm not a medical expert, just my personal opinion. That's how I kind of conquer a lot of my, my uh, heavier thoughts, okay? So focusing on love will bring this forward. But we've got these arguments and this conflict that's going to be kind of coming first. From there, you are going to be debating what it is that you want from the situation with the hanged man and the high priestess, okay? So you probably hit a bit of stagnancy. You might go into no contact. You might um, find that they're creeping. Spirit just said they'll, be, they'll come creeping. Come creeping around you, seeing what you're up to, seeing what's going on. And I want you guys to really listen to your intuition, okay? Pay attention to your gut instinct rather than your head. Like we were just talking about the thoughts. Sometimes the thoughts in our minds can be a little bit disruptive. Um, Whereas our gut instinct is rarely ever wrong. And I know that you guys will have had these thoughts and you go, oh, I should have really listened to my gut. Like on the day I got run over before um, I properly tuned into all the psychic stuff. I had it since birth, but I, I got a bit, long story, got a bit scared. Day I got run over that morning. I was like, this is a really horrid road. Someone's going to get hit by a car. And by the lunch break, my spine had been broken and my spinal cord had got damaged. So... You have this energy coming up with you guys. It's really important to listen to your own intuition and listen to your gut instinct. Remember that you are a two world walker. So what I mean by that is you walk this plane and you walk the next. You see between the lines, okay? You don't just see the black, the white, you see the gray area and you can read the gray area. So make sure that you are listening to your own intuition with regard to the situation whilst you work out what it is you want to do through this heartbreak. So be prepared, sorry it's not great news, but be prepared for arguments, conflicts and tension. Be prepared that you're going to work out what it is that you want to do over it all and really listen to your intuition over it. So let me just skip forward a little bit. My son is singing to you today. Let's just go a bit further into the future. Let's just see, will you guys rekindle? Beautiful singing for a two-year-old. Let me shut that door. Okay, so so with regard to rekindling, you are going to be feeling a little bit of betrayal and a little bit of loss from the situation with them. So you've got the King of Swords, Queen of Pence, Five of Swords. You two are going to struggle to see each other's perspective and each other's point of view on all of this, okay? So your person is going to be acting on logic. You're going to be acting on stability and security. OK, and in between the two of you, there is this sense of loss and betrayal and feeling a bit heartbroken over the situation. So it's going to have to come to some resolution, which is going to be about openly talking about things to move things forward. OK, um, and if you do that, there might be ways to communicate how you can progress things forward. At the moment, as it stands, you are going to be feeling this sense of loss and betrayal um, over these arguments and conflicts that have happened. OK, so it's not an easy fix. It's not an easy fix. Um, when there's a will, there's a way. Like I said, if you focus on love, you've got more chance of things kind of progressing the way you want them to. Um, but it's it's not always that easy. Um, so if you do want us to have a look at this a bit deeper, just drop me a message and I can do same day return on voice notes on Instagram if you want your answer today. Or if you want a video reading, my turnaround is seven days at the moment or within seven days. If I can get back to you before then, I will. So yeah, debt number one, not easy. Keep your vibration high, focus on love and allow the situation to flow. You know, when there's, like I said, when there's a will, there's a way. You can bring it back round, but you two have really got to understand each other's perspective on it. With it, King of Swords and Queen of Pants, you, you, you're not meeting in the middle and you're not fully understanding one another's perspective. And with the Five of Swords going in the, the between you both, there's that sense of betrayal, betrayal of the mind, loss and heartache. So you guys have really got to start listening to one another to move things forward and progress it forward. Sorry, guys. That's deck number one. Oh, dear. <laughs> right. Yeah. Drop me a message if you need me. That's why I'm here. OK, guys. So going on to deck number two. 
Now, what we're doing today is we're going into the future energy of you and the person that you're asking about. Um, and as I said at the start, I love reading future energies. I love the predictions that come up. Um, so it's really fun, fun reading for us to do today. Theoretically, deck number one was a bit, was a bit harsh. <laughs> Let's have a look. What's the future of you and your person? So I just got, we've got the High Priestess on here. Uh, but she comes forward without her clothes on. And I just got that song. Um, Spirit just gave me the song. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. So if you guys are a bit prudish, this is not the reading for you. There will be talk of sex coming up. Okay. Right. You've got a mixed bag, guys. It looks like there's going to be some intimacy. It looks like there's going to be some hooking up. It looks like there's going to be a sexual energy between the two of you. And then it looks like it might come to a bit of an abrupt close. So we'll explore the abrupt close in a second. Let's start off with the more exciting note. So four of wands, empress, high priestess. So we've got a celebration. Okay, we've got joy, we've got success, we've got happy outcomes. May 1st coming up as an important time for you for those celebrations. High Priestess is your energy, that power energy, and we also have the Empress, which is all about giving birth to new dreams. So for you guys watching and the person that you're asking about, we've got this very, we're going off to a very good start that things are celebrating and things are moving forward with you guys. Um... If you haven't met yet, this is a, your say, sign that you'll go on dates. Like I said, you've got the chance to be intimate with one another if that is what you want to do. We've got this communication that can flow between the two of you. Um, we've got growth as well with the High Priestess moving over to the Empress. Growth of the connection with you guys. But then, all of a sudden, we've got the Ten of Swords and Death. So let's see what happens between all this expansion to get to Ten of Swords and Death. Right, then your person is going to be a bit of an ass. OK, so you have all this growth. They're going to tell you everything that you want to hear. It's really important that you pay attention to their actions and not their words, because they're suddenly going to act on logic over the situation and they might withdraw from it. OK, so things will be going really well, really smoothly for you. And then you get hit by a bit of an asshole move and they start working on logic over it all and saying, oh, well, you know what? Let's just see what happens. Let's take our time. And you're going to feel like you've been left with whiplash. OK, so you've had a bit here. They're giving you a bit and took it away. OK, and it's going to make you feel like crap. If I'm completely honest, they're going to make you feel a little bit rubbish. So with the Ten of Swords and Death kind of coming up after the King of Swords, you are going to choose to take a step back from this situation and say, you know what, I deserve something more than what you have given me. I'm over this. I'm getting out of here. I don't want this anymore. And you're going to leave the situation behind. So let me just go a bit further into the future past that and see what happens. Because I do feel with the Ten of Swords it's, um, and Death, even though it's, it's quite heavy, yeah, um, it's temporary. So you're going to come to a bit of a close. Yeah, it's temporary. It's going to come to a little bit of a close between you guys because they're just going to be an asshole. But then you've got the movement back towards you with the eight of ones. So that's saying that you give them enough rope, let them hang themselves, you know, give them enough space, let them realise what they're lost. All of those kind of phrases is what's going to happen. OK, so blossoming, growing, everything's wonderful. They act like an ass. You say, you know what, I'm out of here, I've had enough. And they come and chase you again with the eight of ones. OK, putting the jigsaw pieces of the maze together. I just saw snakes and ladders. I don't know if any of you played that as a kid where you would go up and then you would go down the ladders. It's going to be a bit like that. It's going to be playing a bit of a game with them, waiting for them to make moves, you making moves. Some days you're going to win and some days you're going to lose. Spirit just said to me very clearly, some days you will be the pigeon and some days you will be the statue. <laughs> love that saying when they say that but you have this movement coming towards you and um, you're both going to be burdened by the situation with the ten of wands as well um, your person especially because if you just suddenly cut them out and say you know what I've had enough of your bullshit I deserve something more they're going to suddenly realize and I feel that kind of choking feeling like <clears throat> what have I done I've lost them this isn't how I wanted this to play out and you've got this kind of I'm going to make those moves back towards you so even though it's going to be a bit shit, probably for a couple of days, a couple of weeks tops, they have got this movement back to you. And then you have your celebration that comes at the end of it with the Three of Cups. So things can carry on where they left off when everything was beautiful, wonderful, Empress, High Priestess taking steps forward. Things can carry on where they left off, but it's got to go to crap first. 
and your person's got to realize what they've lost so let me just i just want to ask what's going to create that change within them to realize what they've lost and i know it's you walking away but i just want to see what happens with their feelings okay so they're going to see you most likely on social media see that you're not suffering grieving or sad about them <laughs> and then they're going to be like shit what have i done are they seeing someone else um maybe if you guys decide you watching like they've been an ass i'm going to go back online dating it's like they'll see you somewhere and um, they might even see you when you're out and about and this is when you've got two of cups at the bottom of the deck as well this is when they realize that love for you is there and then this is when they make those moves towards you so deck number two, everything's going to go really good. Shit's going to hit the fan. Going to go through a period where it's a bit rough between the two of you. Then they're going to make moves towards you after they've seen something on social media or um, that you haven't been responsive perhaps to tags or they see how good you're looking. Um, then they'll make moves back to you. You've got the celebration. You can work out what you want from that connection then. And if you want to look at individual readings and look at your individual futures, Give me a shout, mysticlovetarot at gmail.com or find me on Instagram, just mysticlovetarot or Facebook, mysticlovetarot. In fact, if you go anywhere on the internet and you type in mysticlovetarot, you will see me. I have opened up a TikTok as well, um, which I'm, I'm still kind of getting my head around, but it's just going to have the same as the shorts on YouTube. I believe I might put a couple more bits on there, uh, but Instagram's the main key into my active social life if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, which would be great for the pregnancy, to be fair. If you're not following me on there, by the time that maternity leave starts, you are going to want to uh, do that so you can keep up to date with everything. I love you all. Ciao, and I'll speak to you later. Message me if you need me. I'm here for you. Bye.